Hi, मैं हूँ श्रुति with my second nature. And yes, Valentine's Day is round the bend. So I know, बहुत ही corporate created holiday है. जैसे ही Valentine's Day की बात आती है, heart starts to flutter. Uh, not so much with love, but more with anticipation, expectation and fears. <laughs> लेकिन साथ साथ में, it is true. We do like it when there are flowers, chocolates, when there is you know like a dinner date planned, when everything is there. At the same time, we know it's corporate induced. We know that there are big big companies that have a lot to gain from. from creating this holiday success for us while another expense of us while we feel extremely lonely and in one term by the end of it bahut fomo ho jata hai so why does this happen to us why do we subject ourselves to this loop again and again are these just lies that we tell ourselves because it comes from our own insecurity वेल हम ये सवाल खुद से कॉन्स्टेंटली पूछते रह सकते हैं बट इट्स यूजुअली बेटर कि अगर एक प्रॉपर डॉक्टर से बात की जाए ऐसे बहुत ही रोज वाली बातों के साथ बिकॉज दे केन गिव अस इनसाइट्स जो हमें बेहतर नहीं पता सो लेट्स ऑन दैट नोट chat with dr rachna patni and let's try and put our these very mundane everyday questions to her and let's see what a doctor with a phd has to say about this how are you today i'm very well practicing hard with this whole self love thing uh, <laughs> but very happy to meet you again yeah. <laughs> i'm supremely happy especially because now we're just around the bend from valentines day so fear of not having a date on valentines day it is a big one a lot of people are going through it as we speak fear of not being loved uh, the expectation of being seen you know if you are a couple then being seen as the perfect couple are why ek dusre ke liye bane hai and if somebody is not you know in a couplehood coupledom then talking about that oh do you not have somebody this valentine do you not have a date and another issue that you know i was just reading couple of stats and there it was mentioned that maximum number of breakups happen around this holiday because there are so many expectations attached oh sahi time pe flowers nahi mile ya correct type ke flowers nahi mile ya oh usne mera message teen din se she is checked it but not responded so i'm pretty sure she must have moved on she must have many guys after her jo message kar rahe hain to usne मुझे रिस्पॉन्ड नहीं किया सो देर आर सो मेनी इनसिक्योरिटीज दैट कम आउट ड्यूरिंग दिस हॉलिडे दैट इट्स जस्ट दैट यू नो आई हैव टू एट दिस पॉइंट टेक लाइक अ लिटिल इनपुट फ्रॉम माय रियल लाइफ वेयर पास्ट कपल ऑफ इयर्स आई हैव बीन सीइंग दिस वन थिंग वेयर थ्री फोर पीपल आई नो दे सेंड देमसेल्व्स फ्लावर्स एट ऑफिस and when they're sending themselves flowers initially i judged myself thinking that uh, it's okay so somebody wants to send khud ko flowers to bahut achhi baat hai later i realized it was actually to make sure that they projected a certain image and they actually weren't happy about it they were just doing it so that their colleagues think that oh they are you know are wa they are in a relationship koi hai but my question is why is this strong need there to belong why do we have to um why do we get so desperate why is this fear of missing out so strong in us that we desperately need somebody to be there in our life so that's a really interesting uh, aspect you've chosen from your life it is surprising for me to note that this is you know a prevalent kind of a practice yeah. uh, but this is more than about just the need to belong because it is also about the need to be perceived as doing well in your life right you know right because uh, we all um, during these kind of celebrations and occasions it's almost as if we have an appraisal system in place mm. about how we are performing on the different indicators that suggest whether or not you're successful in your life yeah and the first thing we are doing is we are doing it to ourselves right and uh, then we are assuming that others will be doing it to us mm. and so we are constantly performing putting on a show to appear to be doing well enough hmm hmm you know correct and this thing of are you doing well is something as a concept we understand very well yeah because even if you meet a friend after ages you know and they talk about a third friend and they say oh they are doing very well for themselves hmm. then you have already a whole checklist certain image yeah yeah kaise tick 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 kisme hua hai kisme nahi hua hai kaun se mein agar nahi hua hai to chalta hai kaun se mein hua hai to hai toba so you know it's like yeah. that we are right. all very aware about what are our performance indices right. for living our life 
एंड वैलेंटाइन डे पे फ्लावर्स नहीं मिलना मीन लाइक फेल हो गए आई नो सो वॉट कॉज इज दिस इंटेंस फेयर ऑफ मिसिंग आउट लाइक नॉर्मली क्या अरे यू नो योर फ्रेंड्स आर गोइंग ऑन अ डिनर सो आई दू नो आई डोट नो यू नोटिस दिस मेनी पीपल टर्न अराउंड एंड काइंड क्रिएट अ डिस सिचुएशन सेंग ओ इट्स सो पास ए टू गो आउट ऑन डेट्स ऑन वैलेंटाइन्स Now the person saying that because they want to feel good about themselves and say, "Aajkal Valentine's kaun karta hai? Sab na ikatte milke let's go in a group and let's chill and party." So these are mm. different ways. The the quotient of cool changes as per how we are and what we are. But under it all, I feel it's just a very basic thing. People don't want to feel lesser or feel sad. It's just all a way to not feel sad and figure out a way how to not be subjected to FOMO. Mm. so this fear so, of missing out how do we deal with it so this fear of missing out is uh, you know it is something that is triggered with very basic everyday things as well as with these kind of special occasions correct and what is it really uh, it is that notion of um, not being included Hmm. and this 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 not being included is actually happening on the back of a festival let's call it a festival for want of a better word that is all about um, you know all about a capitalistic system of relationships yeah because this whole invention is is something that is about uh, the giving and receiving of gifts rather than honoring and celebrating the giving and receiving of love yeah so when we are not able to participate in this capitalistic venture you know yeah, it's yeah. like we are not doing well for ourselves hmm. it's it's like whether you've got promoted or you know it it takes an intimate relationship into the realm of appraisals right and uh, it's actually very damaging to everyone involved hmm. the only winners are um, the market but mm. also there are people who are trying to address valentines day with creating products that are about celebrating love and it's like a you know just like what you're saying uh you can you can choose to not go out and even then it will be like oh you're just doing it because you don't have anybody to go out with so it it has become a thing which becomes like a benchmark Yeah. whether you want it or you don't want it it doesn't feel like an authentic response correct both the both the camps are taken yeah you know <laughs> one a high situation yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. correct correct so the fear of missing out it really comes from feeling that all of these relationships and appearances you know especially social media nowadays uh that this notion that all of life is a stage has mm. taken a a really bigger meaning now uh, much more than shakespeare would have intended <laughs> because you really? know now there are lights camera filters literally walking around <laughs> with us scripting uh, you know the very basic interchanges that people have with each other yeah. so that it can be consumed by the public eye yeah. and it's very um very good when people are able to recognize this and make steps away from it not to join one lobby or another hmm. but just to say that um i value the relationships i am in and i value myself and it's not about any of these other things hmm. they are frivolous and frills really hmm so if we go slightly more with the same thing about value of a relationship and you know value of love if we take that as a premise and we go into a for example a relationship like you know when you begin to date somebody it's but natural that you have this need to do a lot of different activities with your partner you want to go for brunches you want to travel together you want to binge watch netflix you know you want to show off even going to a party means you want to show off your partner saying look i'm with such a cool person so all these ideas you want to go dancing you want to you know i don't know do some crafts things together whatever whatever it may be we think that it adds value to that relationship our benchmark becomes that if we do these activities with this person that's when we are made for each other and we are good for each other but issue happens when you meet a person and the person doesn't share the same level of enthusiasm with you 
they are not enthu about the same things that you are they don't think rather if you tell them that hey let's go to a party together they literally turn around and tell you why do you want to show me off i'm not interested in such a venture so if but it doesn't mean that the person is not good for you or they are not perfect for you because they are growth oriented all that is there but how do you figure how do you basically go on this bridge and try and figure the correct path out what is the right thing to do are they actually perfect for us or in that moment do we need to break it off and find someone who's like us you're getting the confusion many many layers that exist around that kind of feeling so this is almost like we are outsourcing uh, the decision about whether the relationship is good to a checklist that has been determined by social media yeah and this is i have never said this line before but i feel i ought to write it down hmm. because uh, every word in that uh, is a is very intentionally put there hmm. uh, when um relationships begin to perform the primary function of uh, appearances mm. then we really hollow it out mm. and a hollowed out relationship is never fulfilling because it requires a hollowing out right so it is all about what is uh, being perceived by others Hmm. and we lose our internal radar our internal connection with how it feels to be with this person when we are not engaged in any activity right how does it feel to be with another person right and being with another person is something that is truly about a relationship whereas doing things with another person is a way of filling the time with pursuits which you can of course do and there's nothing wrong with it but it doesn't ever replace the being with each other and in fact uh, ages ago um a very dear psychologist of mine wrote a book uh, called to have or to be mm. and uh, is this man called eric from and i feel that the ideas of to have or to be they keep returning you know every new juncture with every new technology with every new festival to celebrate you know um this thing about are we living life to have more or are we being more alive mm. i think these are the questions to ask ourselves about every relationship right right so when you say being more and being in a relationship um for i mean i understand what you're trying to say that the whole appearance needs to be you know dialed down and how you feel being with a person has to be dialed up but for a lot of our viewers right now and for our listeners right now uh being with somebody means collective doing these things exactly exactly yeah. so then how does yeah. for the first time how does a person look within and say okay these are the questions i should ask myself that's when i know that this is not doing and this is being and this is not being and this is doing hmm. so let's say uh, you are at at an early stage of a relationship with another person yeah okay and uh, what's great is to not go in with a checklist and say hey if they don't like pottery or if they don't want to be uh, at this coffee bar they are not my type you know are they a day early morning waking person or a late sleeping person or like you know dressing yes. a certain way <laughs> brushing with so certain... <laughs> the, these checklists yes so i think it is about becoming aware of what is the checklist that you're carrying yeah and recognizing that actually these checklists they might be great to filter out some refract yeah. but beyond a the point they are not helpful for cultivating a deep and meaningful relationship right right the second thing is in your early days again it's it's being attuned to how you're feeling you know so the earlier exercises of what am i feeling where am i feeling it yeah yeah is it are you feeling um that the other person is interested in your existence hmm are you wow. feeling no. that they are listening to you are you feeling that they are interested in finding out more about what you feel or think or do hmm. those are the places of depth in an early relationship right if it is about 
you know sometimes you may get two people who are like uh, very happy to be performing together mm. i mean i, yeah. I was uh, you know just pre uh, lockdown in goa uh, we had decided to have a holy party and uh, it was a lovely setting and we had been there for like 5 hours and we were really tired by now and then i saw a couple they were both wearing black they came in and they um, literally showered themselves with color it was a total script and they <laughs> clicked a picture at this party venue it was like our personal party space and they you know picked props from our thing and they clicked a picture and and that is all they wanted out of it right, right. so that was their holy and mm. it it did not need to happen in the real life it needed to happen in the real life mm. you know mm. and so sometimes you may have two people who are looking for exactly the same thing and it may be a particular passing phase right. but when either party is looking for a little more than that then it's nice to let them take the lead right right yeah that's how you know that you're in a good relationship which is growth oriented and you can actually it'll be tough but you'll grow you'll grow together it'll be super tough it'll break you into a million pieces before you find yourself again but it'll happen <laughs> well i think you know that you reach like after 7 years in a relationship you know <laughs> and then at 14 years and then at 21 years or huh. whatever huh. Huh. Um, but the beginning uh, you know having someone who's truly listening to you is very joyful many people yeah. have never experienced that in their life right right so today i think valentines pay what we need to do is listen more be present more and just like you know be there for ourselves if not our partner be there for ourselves to 100% that's how self love will be right so good right. on that note are we ready to say bye or are there any parting words that you want to shower our listeners with right now yes i want to uh, you know really end with this thing that uh, we often uh, have um, you know these narcissistic ideas because as a community we are always being brought up to um, to show the good side of ourselves true, you know true and of course uh, it's there's healthy narcissism and it's all about the balance of it correct so when as a society we start functioning at the edge of negative narcissism where it just becomes about the performances and nothing about the authenticity right. it's really a a balancing act between these two Uh, that choosing to be real and choosing to celebrate what doesn't fit an instagram filter mm. you know mm. uh, is what's going to really um, add depth and meaning to our lives and in fact it's it's very good to uh, keep some elements of relationships outside of public consumption spaces because yeah. they are intimate for a reason yeah yeah wow. to be enjoyed in that way so wonderful very nice i think i also need to listen to today's episode on a rewind like ek bar aur do bar aur sunke and then like go forward but thank you so much for taking our time and sharing such important wisdom things which are so valid in our today's uh, real life culture so thank you thank you for that thank you shruti